Our nation's home ownership gap is as wide as it has ever been, with whites becoming homeowners at substantially higher rates than those of other racial or ethnic groups. Why are so many still being kept from the American dream of home ownership? Government policies and practices in the early to mid 1900s kept many Americans from purchasing homes due to their race, color, national origin, and sometimes religion. Some recourse came in 1968 when the Federal Fair Housing Act banned housing discrimination across lending transactions when the discrimination targeted a protected class. The 1974 Equal Credit Opportunity Act provides some lending protections as well. Yet over a half century later, Americans are still experiencing the ripple effects of old discriminatory policies, as well as newer forms of lending discrimination. Let's look at eight common traps and obstacles to homeownership wealth building that are impacting our families, neighborhoods, and communities today. Number one, customer treatment or steering. Prospective homebuyers and homeowners rely on lending officers to make them aware of mortgage products, tell them what they qualify for, and help them navigate the mortgage process. But very often, Blacks and Latinos are not offered the same information that white home seekers receive. They are often not told about all mortgage products available, may be steered into FHA loans even though they qualify for conventional loans, be encouraged to apply online instead of being assisted through the process by a loan officer, or be offered more costly loan products than would be offered to similarly situated whites. A 2020 report found that Black Americans are charged more on average for mortgage interest payments, mortgage insurance premiums, and property taxes over the life of a typical loan. These additional costs greatly impact the equity that these homeowners can accumulate, use, or pass down. Number two, denial based on race and ethnicity. Several recent reports on mortgage lending have found that lenders are denying mortgages to people of color at significantly higher rates than white applicants of similar financial standing. As the lending process becomes more automated, bias in algorithms is also being uncovered. A 2021 statistical analysis of over 2 million home mortgage applications looked at the impact of race while holding 17 other factors steady so that prospective borrowers of color looked almost exactly the same on paper as the white applicants. And yet, lenders were 40% more likely to turn down Latino applicants for loans, 50% more likely to deny Asian and Pacific Islander applicants, 70% more likely to deny Native American applicants, and a staggering 80% more likely to reject Black applicants than their white counterparts, even at higher income earning levels. Number three, targeting based on race and ethnicity. With the expansion of the subprime lending market beginning around 2000, we have seen more incidents of reverse redlining where lenders target residents in certain areas often based on income, race, or ethnicity, and give those targeted borrowers credit on unfair terms, different from what other similarly situated people could get. Often, these are predatory products built to fail or resulting in significantly higher costs or fees. Examples include high cost loans, rent to own or reverse mortgage schemes, equity theft through cash for homes contracts, and more. Number four, reverse mortgages. A 2019 study found that predatory lenders encouraged elderly homeowners in low-income black neighborhoods to borrow money against their home equity through reverse mortgages while glossing over the risks and requirements of these products. Victims very often ended up losing their homes to foreclosure, about six times more often in predominantly black neighborhoods than in neighborhoods that were at least 80% white, and even when neighborhood income was matched. These foreclosures leave many with unexpected housing insecurity or loss and great distress in their later years. Number five, appraisals. Appraisal discrimination can happen when someone initially purchases their home or when they attempt to refinance or sell it. 
There have been increasing reports across the country about black Americans who receive appraisals they felt were too low. Some of these families then whitewash their homes by removing family photos, art, books, and anything else that might identify their race. Some even had white people pose as family members to meet with the appraisers. After the whitewashing, appraisal values jumped dramatically. Historically black neighborhoods, as a whole, still suffer artificially low appraisals because decades of bias and devaluing have been baked into the valuation process. This represents a tremendous loss of wealth and possibility for black communities. Number six, disability. In recent years, the regulatory agencies have received a number of complaints claiming discrimination against mortgage applicants who receive disability income. In these complaints, lenders allegedly treated individuals with disabilities less favorably than individuals without, for example, by requiring more invasive and burdensome income documentation. This may include providing sensitive medical information to a lender in order for a loan to be processed, something not required in underwriting regulations. Number seven, maternity leave. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has seen a steady stream of complaints since 2010, alleging discrimination by borrowers who were on maternity leave. In these cases, lenders allegedly denied or delayed loans to working home seekers because they were pregnant or on maternity leave, even at times when they were receiving their full pay. Some lenders required the pregnant person to end their maternity leave early and return to work in order to be approved for a loan, causing significant stress and hardship. Number eight, sexual harassment. Across the US, there has been an increase in documented complaints of sexual harassment across housing and lending transactions. In 2010, for example, the Department of Justice alleged that a former bank vice president sexually harassed female customers through verbal statements, unwanted touching, and requests for sexual favors in return for favorable action on loan applications. Unfortunately, sexual harassment can occur in any type of housing transaction. Navigating lending products and home ownership can be complicated and overwhelming, and discrimination of any kind only adds to this stress. If you suspect you have experienced or witnessed lending discrimination, you have a voice. There are laws in place and organizations who are committed to fighting against discrimination, like the Fair Housing Center of Central Indiana. Sharing your experience gives the Fair Housing Center the opportunity to build legal cases that help put an end to discriminatory housing practices in your area. Please contact us at fhcci.org.